Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, on Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited you're joining me tonight. So the plan for tonight is just to talk through um, my most recent concert, my first grade concert, talk you through all the planning, preparation, the costumes we wore, where how kids stood, why we did that, um, how I took and adapted some songs that we were already using in our classroom to use for the concert, and just sort of to talk through some of those details. Um, because I feel like we don't get to talk about stuff like that very often, so I, I hope that it'll be beneficial for you to sort of see um, into my my most recent concert, why we did what we did, um, and then chat about that. So if you have questions along the way, please add those in the comments um, or or shoot them out, whether it's a comment about this specific concert or concerts in general. Um, I'd love to chat more about that. Um, and that's what's coming up today. So a couple quick things if you hear about a book or resource you're interested in. I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the resources I talk about in these videos. You can click the link at the bottom of wherever you're listening or watching this. Um, or you can do it the hard way and go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, click the video tab and find the one for this current school year. That's the long way, but there should be a link hopefully in the description of wherever it is you are accessing this content. Um, one more thing, if you want to be a part of a Facebook group, there's a group, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. It's a place where you can ask questions, um, share ideas, share resources, um, and just sort of interact with other people um, in a non-threatening place where you know you can ask questions and find great um, answers and hopefully great ideas. So hopefully that's um, a place that can be beneficial to you. Come and find us on Facebook. Okay, so today, um, I honestly sort of just want to talk like we're just two, you know, music teachers sitting down talking about like, what did you do for your most recent concert? How did you do that? Because I feel like we as teachers don't get a lot of time to do that um, and to ask questions or to share ideas and things that, that um, have worked for us or we tried out and maybe didn't work or things that we want to change. Um, so I'm just going to be real honest and share like what I did and what worked well and like what I was really nervous about <laughs> going into the show um, and all that before uh, and just sort of share that with y'all today. So again, if you have questions, please throw them out there because I'm sure thinking, you know, I've been thinking about this concert for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and I'm sure that I'll miss something. So if you're like, ooh, can you clarify, blah, 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 I'd be happy to. So I'm sort of planning on talking a little bit about the the particulars of the concert so like sort of how we uh, or how I planned it and how I sort of executed it like the prep going up to the concert some of all the details behind it and then I'll talk you through the songs um, and how I modified them because for this concert it's first grade this is a first grade concert so uh, it's not like a big musical production it was more of a just like we're taking songs that we already use in our classroom and we're modifying them changing them adapting them just shining them up a little bit um, and sharing them with parents um, in the form of like a, a performance. So uh, my plan today is sort of talk you through the, some, some of those behind the scenes things and then get to like the specifics of the content. And then if you all have any questions at the end, I'll sort of try and get to some of those. So um, uh, just a quick background so y'all know what's happening um, with my school, why I did the concert this way. So um, at my school, at the beginning of the school year, they said no in-person concerts for parents. You can do, you should, you can and should do concerts um, for grade levels um, at your school, but no after school performance. Okay, it's, and, but you should live stream all of your concerts. Okay, cool. So like that's what, uh, through all through the fall, that's what m the people in my district did. And so for my fourth grade and fifth grade shows, it was all live streamed um, and all just in school performances. But, and, and sort of like in the gym spread out, we weren't like on a stage and shoved together and stuff like that. It was like spread out and um, there were modifications that were made for, you know, spacing and, and, and singing and all sorts of stuff that was all masked. Well, everything changes <laughs> uh, through the school year. I mean, so many of you know, you're like, oh yeah, my district, every day there's something d different. Um, I just, I'm ready to <laughs> get to the end of the school year, like let's not make a major change between now and May, whatever. Um, so as of January 3rd, um, the district decided, okay, those concerts you were doing, now you need to add a public performance, so an after-school performance, which 
was really interesting timing because it was like the week before the Omicron wave hit, but whatever. Um, that was what the district decided, so that's what we went with. Um, and uh, so then basically I had to, all the things that I had planned for the spring, I had to rethink because at, at that time the district said, either you have to have a parent performance and limit it to two guests, two parents or whatever, two guests per kid for capacity reasons, or you don't limit capacity and just have everything outside. Okay, or in like a big space, like go to the high school, go to the gym, go to their auditorium where there's bigger capacity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's what they told us January 3rd. Um, and so I replanned and retooled my second, third, and first grade concerts to be done outside. Like I was, <laughs> I felt like um, a psychic because I was like, consulting all the like <laughs> like all the things i consulted the farmer's almanac for when sun up and sundown was projected possible temperatures and weather and weather <laughs> felt like i was like like a cross between like a psychic and a meteorologist trying to like figure out like can i have them outside what can what would that look like and then trying to figure out where we could have the concerts because like my school basically when the district bought up the land they bought up land that was uh, enough land for a high school, middle school, and elementary school on basically the same plot of land. So like my school touches the campus of the high school, which touches the campus of the middle school. So like I can theoretically use the high school, like soccer field, football field, all that. But of course all that's booked up. And so they told us mid-year, they're like, hey, you could do it outside. So like, anyway, there's this magical grassy soccer field that is like, part of the college or part of the college part of the high school campus but that they like never use so i was i emailed the ad and the building secretary and the scheduler and the like everyone in the district saying hey can i use the mill valley soccer practice field and they were like oh we don't book that space because it's not like one of our official spaces or whatever so like you can just use it and I was like, well, but I want to like lock it down. I don't want to like send a couple hundred parents there and then like then have a soccer team practice. Anyway, there's this whole mess. Where do we do it? So, uh, but luckily I had the space right outside my school where I could conceivably have a concert. Okay. And then, <laughs> then halfway through the prep period of all of this, then they lifted the requirement for masks in the schools. They lifted the requirement for uh, you can only have so many parents or whatever, all, all these changes. Anyway, so basically we're back at the point where like, you can have as many people as you want in a gym and you can do whatever you want and spacing doesn't matter. Nobody has to wear masks. But like, I had already started teaching everything. So I was like, okay, so my, so my third grade concert, I still held outside. It was a folk dance concert. I sort of talked about that several weeks ago, but it was actually better to have outside because then you could spread out and I could have four homerooms of third graders plus all their parents out on one big soccer field and do a folk dance night together there. It was super easy and super fun. Um, I hope I, I hope parents walked away. Well, I know a lot of parents who talked to me walked away and they were like, this was so much fun. It was different than something we've normally done. So like that was cool. And it was, uh, it was easy to do outside. We had great weather that day. Leading up to the concert I'm going to talk about today, we knew a uh, uh, like on the Monday of the concert week, because the concert was on Thursday, we knew the Monday, like, it's going to be super cold and rainy. And actually, the, like, the day, so we, we decided to move it inside, into the gym. But, like, the day of the concert, after school, between school and my concert, I, like, ran to Starbucks. I'm coming back, and it's, like, sleeting, snowing. Like, it didn't accumulate, but I was like, okay, well, yeah, we <laughs> glad we moved it inside. But um, that meant that, like, the week of the show, I had to, like, replan all the elements where like we're super spaced out or we're moving a lot or we're whatever to like how can we do that in the gym that was like this is that's just like all the backstory to like why we did what we did so anyway um we had we had it outside we had to move it inside that meant i had to rethink the spacing i had to rethink how i was going to do some of the games because uh, for first grade my thought is like i don't want to do like a, a spectacular like musical event my thought is first graders should just be sharing how much they love music, should be singing fun songs, moving. Um, and in my head, I don't want them to feel like they're like lines and costumes and sets and whatever. Like at some point in their elementary K through five experience, I want them to have that sort of experience of like more of a musical, but I don't necessarily think that first grade is the appropriate time for that. First grade is just like, we're still making music and we're being joyful and some of us still can't 
hole that we have to run to the bathroom. You know, like, so, like, the expectations are low because the kids, again, where they are developmentally, I don't necessarily think, like, I'm going to hand out a speaking part to every kid. Like, that, in my head, that does, that doesn't make sense. So, uh, for these younger concerts, it's more of, like, we're going to show you what we're already doing in our classroom, but we're going to change the songs a little bit or adapt them a little bit to make them a little bit showier, but it's still going to be sort of that the grade level content that you would normally see in a classroom. It's sort of like an informants plus is what I sort of think about for these concerts. So um, I had to sort of rethink because there were some things that were going to be way more active because we're going to be outside and I had to sort of pare that back a little bit. But I'll talk about that when I get to the songs and the content. So because I planned on being outside for this concert, I did not plan any decorations, any backdrop, anything like that. Uh, my school has a very supportive parent group, and I know that if I had emailed out, hey, parents, moms, dads, guardians, whoever's, um, I would love to have a decorating crew who wants to come and help build a set. I know people would be willing to do that, but I don't. I didn't feel like, ooh, as of Monday morning, I could email that out and then have them all show up and be ready and, you know, buy things, whatever, get things to put out on Thursday. It just didn't feel right. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to stress about set. I'm not going to stress about any of that. I'm just going to move on. Um, another thing was costume. I, for years, have, I am not a, I'm not a fan of everybody wears the same thing. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, must have this color on. Um, just because my first couple years teaching, I taught in a very high poverty district where asking that of students um, was a, a hard ask. There, there were a lot of kids who they couldn't do it. And I carry, I've carried that through me through my career. Like, I don't feel like I can ask um, kids who maybe their parents are struggling to make ends meet. I don't feel like I can ask them, like, hey, can you go buy this costume for your kid um, for the show that happens for 30 minutes on a Thursday afternoon? Um, so I just, I don't, I've never felt super comfortable with that. So instead, um, I've always tried to have options for parents and options for kids for what they can wear for a concert. So this concert was zoo themed. So as we were getting ready for the concert in the weeks leading up to the concert, I would tell kids, I emailed out to parents, I told teachers, um, I had my principal put it in her newsletter, all so everyone was seeing it in all different places. But um, we talked, I talked to kids and I said, here's the plan, it's about a zoo. And so if you have a shirt or clothes or dress or something that has a picture of an animal on it, a monkey, an elephant, a zebra, um, a gorilla, uh, even a cat, whatever. Any any animal that you like or you have a picture of on your on your clothes, wear that. That'd be so cool. So cool. Or or if you have like one of those shirts that is like cheetah print or like zebra or giraffe or even cow. If you think it looks like an animal print, like an animal, you know, like the skin of an animal, like the cool sort of texture print that they have, wear that. Um, or anything animal related, if it says zoo on it, if it says like safari on it, anything that like is related to the zoo, wear that. Uh, okay, could, and so then I would quiz them. Could you wear a shirt with um, a giraffe on it? Yes. Could you wear a shirt with um, hmm, a dolphin on it? Sure. Could you wear a shirt with a bumblebee on it? Why not? Could you wear a shirt with an alien on it? No. Could you wear a shirt with... Um, a cougar on it. That's our school mascot. Yes. Could you wear a shirt with a unicorn on it? Okay, probably not a unicorn because even though that's an animal, I don't think that you would find one of those at a zoo. I've never seen one at a zoo before, so probably not that. But so many other options. And then I said, and if you don't have any of that, wear one of our school shirts because all the kids get a school shirt at some point through the year. I think the PTA gives them out for like our, our relay fundraiser day. Um, and they most of the time have like a cougar on the front and they say the name of our school. So like, okay. Um, I said, if you don't have any of those things, wear anything else you are comfortable in that it's bright colored, that you're you're happy and that you can move in. And so again, I always just have like, with all my concerts, I've always been like, here's an option, here's an option, here's an option, here's an option. So the next one that's coming up, my ocean themed concert, I said, wear, again, a ocean animal themed. So if, do you have a fish shirt? Do you have a shark shirt? A lot of people have sharks. Do you have dolphins? Do you have jellyfish? Do you have whatever? If you want to get super duper creative and, and like add something to a shirt, 
cool. If you if your mom has like a cricket and wants to like print a thing on there that says like your name and a dolphin, cool. If you want, ooh, or if you just want something like, if you have do you have a shirt with a boat, if you have a shirt with like a uh, starfish, if you have anything ocean related, or if your shirt is blue or green or purple and looks like it could be like the waves, cool. If your favorite dress has all these super great ruffles and is purple and blue and looks like the waves, I love it, wear that. If your shirt, you know, like I, I keep getting options. Um, and again, like uh, really <laughs> lucky last year, our school shirt when these kids were first graders was a shirt that was blue and green and had a narwhal on it. So it's like, perfect, wear that. You know, so I, I like giving kids options and those for the for the zoo concert, it was super great open-ended because a lot of kids in that age range, like K12, will have some sort of animal shirt or can find one. Or if they want to go buy a new one, they can do that and it shouldn't be that hard to find it. They could find it at Walmart or find it at Target or wherever. Um, or again, and I give them the option of wear something you already have, don't go out and buy anything. If you want to wear a costume, cool. Um, I even said like, if you want to wear a costume, you can just, you can't wear like a shirt that like covers your entire face. Like if you have, if you have like a, like a gorilla costume, but the, the mask covers your entire face, like we want to see your face. Or if you have like one of those cool hoodies, you know, that like turns into an animal or whatever, but it has to zip close over your face. You can't wear that. But anyway, other, otherwise, you know, the options are wide open and I like giving the kids those options. So like no decor, <laughs> I was so stressed about the parents are going to be like, Hmm, no decor but nobody said anything at least to me and uh, and also like it it was the week of that we decided to move things inside so like i don't think anybody's gonna stress out about like well why did you figure out in the last three days like a huge set also I, we do our concerts in the gym so it's like the gym is used daily before during and after school and like when could we get in what would not get knocked down and they use they because of covid still they use the stage for lunch they, I mean, so like they use it for band. We like would never have time up there. So maybe next year we'll do some sets and stuff. But this year I'm not, I'm not gonna stress it. Okay, costumes decor, um, moved it outside from to inside. Um, another thing we had to think about was, um, well, like prep time. So like the the week leading up. So my specials team, the expectation that we've done in the past is like the five days leading up to the concert, I get all the kids. So like for a full rotation of lessons i get all the kids all the whole grade so in those five days really four are our practice days and the fifth day is the day where we like share it with the school so like the morning of the concert the public performance concert that morning or that afternoon we do a performance for the school um so my first graders that day performed for the school in the gym and then in the evening they performed for the parents which is nice because then I can get like everything set up. I can do a trial run, a test run of everything. And then in the evening, um, I sort of worked out some of the issues most of the time. So it's like a sort of a, a nice setup. Well, um, so like the, my expectation for those like four real practice days, because the fifth day is like a run through, like a performance for the school. The very first day is just get in the gym, just get into your like line spot, just get into your standing spot and get through as many songs as you can. Like that is, that's my only goal. And for first grade, we got through all the songs in the first day and some we even did a second time. And so for me on that first day, I I think that it's like, it's enough for kids to just be in the space together, to be in a different place singing the songs, to hear the entire grade singing the song. You know, I, maybe I accompany on ukulele and now they're hearing it out of speakers, they're hearing it across the gym. It's just enough in that, for, I don't have high expectations of like, must be perfect, must be perfect. Like, no, it's just get in there and do what you can do. Um, and so in that first day, it's a lot of like setting expectations. What are expectations for the gym? Wow, you're, it's a lot of praise. Wow, you're doing so good, but you know what? I, I just can't hear this. What if we, you know, and like giving slow, um, changes or adaptations. Whoa, oh my gosh, Miss Allison's class, your actions on that song are so great, but you know what? I think you're the most animated of all of the classes. I wonder, can you show the other classes what you're doing so they, you know, just like giving kids to sort of like equalize out everything so across the board it will sort of looks nice and, and gets better. So that's the, the first day is just get in and sing through everything you can. The second day of the, that rotation, it's get through. Um, maybe if you have a, a song where like you have to switch formations or switch movement to like sort of start work, walking through some of those things or at least figure out where kids are going to go and again get through as many songs as you can on the third day it's like 
get through as many songs as you can, walk through the things. If there are props or if there are like things they have to hold, add those in and, and figure that out. And then the fourth day is mostly a run through um, as much as possible. Um, so for, for my classes, like uh, we were going to use the space in front of the stage on the gym floor and also the stage. There are going to be risers set up on the stage. Um, and, and our stage, it's like this far off the ground. So like there's a step up onto the stage. It's like basically like two like stair steps basically to get up onto the stage. So it's not really like a, a huge, like they're not super high off the gym floor when they're on the stage. So we put risers up there. So basically between... The, the four steps of the risers and the stage and then the floor I had six rows I could put kids on um, and so I sort of stacked it so that once we got up there we we fit all the kids up on the stage for a couple songs so for two of the songs at the beginning kids were in their riser spots then they came out and stood out on the gym floor and we went back up under riser spots for another two songs at the end just so parents could get like pictures of kids on the stage on risers and we could do more active things on the floor for a couple of our songs which i'll talk through in a little bit but that's sort of my plan in my run through is like i don't exp i don't i don't go into a rehearsal on the first day thinking like well we're just going to get as far as we can get we're going to do it the, the with everything the first day no i don't introduce props the first day i don't introduce transitions the first day i just get them in and get them singing and try and get it through as much as you can because i want them to have that repetition i want them to hear it and feel it and sort of know some of the some of what's coming and then we sort of stair step so every day it's just one extra thing one extra thing we're scaffolding in in our preparation so that every day there's like one more part of what we're doing Okay, so that's like the lead up to the show. Uh, two more things before I talk about all the content in the show, and I'm going to tr try and get through all of that. And again, if you have questions or thoughts along the way, please throw those in the chat. I'll try and answer those as I go. I hope I'm explaining some of these things as we go. Um, one more thing I always do before, as parents come in. So parents come in, let's say it's the night of the show, Thursday night. Parents come in at 545. They're supposed to be there to drop off their kids. The show starts at 6. Um I feel like for me personally, any earlier than that, and kids are just sitting for so long waiting and parents are sitting for so long waiting. And also it's just so much time. So, because you know, if you say like drop off kids at 530, they're gonna be parents there at 515 waiting to drop off. I'm like, ah, nobody's got time for that. So I always say like, drop off kids 15 minutes before the show. That gives them a 15 minute window to get their kid, get parked, get there. And I don't have a lot of parents who get there late, so like that's pretty good. And usually, like we don't start at six; we start at six or three or six or four or whatever. So, but uh, I have kids drop off their kids in the lunchroom at five forty-five, and then uh, we'll traipse down and should start the show by six, hopefully. Okay, so they drop off kids, they go in, and then as parents go in, like I have uh, this year, you know, I have like a, a program, right, which has like the a little bit of explanation about the show, the name of the show. Uh, the grade and then like a rundown of, of the things for me that's like all the stuff that you'd put in a, a scrapbook it's got the names of the songs got a little explanation of what the concert was um, it has our name prairie ridge elementary school presents and then the name of the show and then concert selections featuring first grade so like all the stuff so like if a parent's like well what year was that first grade okay prairie ridge okay and here are the songs you did easy peasy on the second page i have classroom teachers and then all the students names listed and then also at the bottom, thanks. Like, thanks to the teachers, thanks to the specials team, to our admin, to our uh, school board, all of that. That's all on the second page. This is like, I just do this a front and back. I know you can do like the foldy foldy and it can be really fancy and like whatever, but look, that's so much work. And so <laughs> for me, I just do this one, one page this way, one page on the other side with all the student names. Um, and, and for me, that's easier. Um, I've been doing that for a couple years where that's just our concert program. I don't try and do the fold thing. I don't try and do staples. I don't so I don't mess with any of that. But this year I was like, you know what? I, I had planned we're going to be outside. So I don't want to print a bunch of programs that are going to fly around on the soccer field if it's windy or get wet or get lost or get left outside. I didn't want to mess with that. Also, um, our, school, our school was like, hey, quit, quit printing so much paper. So instead, um, I did a QR code. Um, I actually took the, the program itself, I made it a PDF, and I sent it out to parents the night before. Um, and it was in an email to them on the night before. They got it as an attachment in their email. I sent it all out. 
Um, on the day of the show, I had it available through a QR reader or through a QR code. And so then I made this thing that just says like Groovy Zooby Zoo, Prairie Ridge Elementary, the QR, and then download the concert program. So that I had, uh, I had it posted out in a couple places. I had um, teachers, I gave each teacher a copy of it and then like a little dry erase pocket so they could just hold it up for parents or whatever. Um, and for the third grade concert, we did this outside. Again, I put in that like dry erase pocket, which is sort of it's like, sort of like laminating it. So that then like it was easier to hold easier and it wouldn't blow away. Um, and, and I had a couple of parents walking around. Anybody else need the QR? Anybody else need the scan? And so it made it pretty easy to get the concert program out to parents. A lot of parents were like, oh, I got that in email. And then some are like, ooh, hey, grandparents here or whatever. They didn't get it, so let's scan it. So anyway, um, that's how I, I, ha I handed out the program. But also, as parents are sitting down in their seats look, you know, waiting, I also have um, a PowerPoint going. So I have, I have music playing just like, you know, celebrate good time. just like some easy easy background music pharrell's happy i don't know try everything by shakira like i have a playlist of like concert music like pre-concert music um i thought about trying to pipe in like animal sounds like zoo sounds and i was like we're just gonna go with the happy music so the that also means i gotta test my speakers <laughs> so my speakers are going um my connection is going to my ipad i'm playing music as i'm playing um there's a a a PowerPoint that's going and I'll just show you sort of what's included in that um, so a couple reasons I do this one is again for parents who are like I want to get that photo for the scrapbook um, and so I have this sort of scrolling as they come in um, and so things that are in the show okay what well says groovy zooby zoo first grade right and it has this cute little picture oh I got a couple versions Okay, first grade picture. Oh, you can't really see that. Sorry, sorry, Instagram. Okay, and then it says, please check the lost and found. Before you leave tonight, you'll find many lost items on the racks across from the front office. Okay, just fun little slide. Please check that. Oh, look, Groovy Zooby Zoo again. And you can't really see, but the background is like animal prints and bright colors. And anyway, sort of fun. Donate your unused musical items to the Prairie Ridge Music Room. Talk to Mr. Rao for more details. So like, if there's somebody out there who like has an old saxophone or has an old banjo or what i'm still waiting for a parent to donate a banjo i'm just hopeful someday it'll happen um so, you know another instrument donate we'd love to have it um but they don't know that you'd want that unless you like tell them so i put it in my little powerpoint that goes out oh look there's the show name again if you're interested in joining the prairie ridge pta here's the email for that or ask your classroom you know your homeroom teacher or whatever and that's just another plug because the pta does so much for me that i wanted to make sure like in this moment where like I can take a second and put it out there I put that up there um, so that parents can you know and this is first grade too this is the first concert they will go to because kindergarten doesn't do one so this is their first chance if they weren't plugged into the PTA now's a chance for them to get plugged in if they want um, oh and then this one just explains the zoo animals are on the loose we might need your help to get them back into their habitats be prepared for a little audience participation so it's sort of prepping parents there was not a ton of crazy preparation start saving now next year's program is going to be food themed if you come across any chef costumes props hats or decorations set those aside and save them for our second grade concert next year second grade is loosely I, i'm already planning it's going to be food themed i do not have i have like two or three songs like i think i want to do this i don't know any of the particulars but i know it's going to be food themed and so i'm just telling parents like hey this is your warning you know go <laughs> if you see that stuff um plan have some pictures of the concert you'd be willing to share email them and i put my email you know it's just one more way to connect with parents let them know my email let them know they can reach out and yes please send pictures if you have them and then that just scrolls you know as as parents are sitting waiting they're literally a captive audience so like it's just a chance for me to connect with them um, and put some information out there um, at my old school where we all had like twitter accounts i would also put like hey here's the twitter account for the art teacher and the tech teacher and the whoever um, so that uh, parents could follow us if they wanted or like here's my twitter for my classroom follow it for pictures or what you know so i put that in the scroll just so like they could get some of that but it, again it's just like one way to connect and at my old school i had a donor's tubes i put that information up there um if there was like a you know coming up like hey auditions for whatever if, you know for, if it's applicable to your student i put it up there um but i, I just try again it's they're captive they're just sitting there they're bored they're checking i don't know they're doing wordle or whatever you know so like they're probably it's something for them to look at and, or take pictures if they want um but i just play that and i have fun music playing while they while they do that
okay, cool. Let's talk. Let's talk about um, the content. So, um, ooh, 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 and sorry. Okay, so one thing I did have, I was, um, I put out in the hallway, um, just to like sort of dress up the space. I know I said I didn't do decorations. I didn't really. Um, I have all these zoo animal plates from years ago. I don't think they even make them anymore, but I bought a bunch of them when I first started teaching a bunch of years ago. I still have them. I did, we never ate off of them. I only use them for decoration. But anyway, all these like animal plates, um, super bright, very nostalgic for some people. Um, and I put these out in the hallway. I just taped them up in the hallway with like little signs like zoo animals this way or whatever, you know, just like silly little things. Um, so that went up. And then another thing I did was I made these coloring sheets years ago. Um, and I had first graders, I, I sent them out to the first grade teachers um, saying like, hey, could this be like morning work for your first graders this week? And so they colored them. And it's like iguana playing the ipu or uh, peacock playing the pan pipes. Elephant playing a nectara. You know, like turtle playing the tuba so this was stuff that kids colored and then we put those out in, in the hallway and again it's just sort of an instrument alphabet you know but um it's fun for kids to color in and um again animal themed so super easy little decoration just for the hallway um i didn't put that on the links page but i will put a link to that on the links page if you're interested okay let me talk through the songs i used and how we sort of change them so the quick rundown is um, we started out with a song called Groovy Zoovy Zoo. We did a song called Matilda the Gorilla. We did Wake Up You Sleepy Heads. We did Little Bo Peep, Go Into the Jungle Today, Animal Action, Grizzly Bear, Five Little Speckled Frogs, and Groovy Zoovy Zoo at the end. I realized I could cut one of those songs, but as I was prepping, I was like, I don't really think I want all of them. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? It was like one song too long, and I think I know which one I would cut, but... It was fine, nobody complained, it didn't seem too long, it was super fun, and I think I could have pared down if I'd wanted, but it's better to have more than not. So that's why I put like on the program, I put concert selections in case I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that one, you know, but but we could if we wanted. So the first song, Groovy Zoovy Zoo, that's a Music K8 song. Um, and so if you, I did put a link to that on the links page. You can buy those as individuals. I think that it's part of um, like a pack, let me see, um, it doesn't say, oh yes, it's, um, in volume 21, number five, so if you bought, uh, volume 21, whatever year that was, you already have this song, um, but you can also buy it as a standalone, like, single song, like, I don't think that I had volume 29 when I wanted this, so I bought it, um, that was a couple years ago. I bought it personally, so I, I have it. But anyway, um, so the song Groovy Zoovy Zoo, it's just this cute little song. Groovy Zoovy Zoovy Zoo. Groovy Zoovy Zoo. Groovy Zoo. And then they have, um, so it's like a little song, and then there's a B section, which is um, like a sort of a spoken word section. Um, and the, I, I we changed the words. So the originals are like the... Uh, the penguins are prancing, the leopards are leaping too, the crocodiles are crying. I was like, so I can't remember exactly what it was. The reason I changed it was because it was sort of wordy and quick for first graders and a lot of like animal names all at once. So um, when we learned it, we I would play this the recording and I was like, ooh, just listen, we're going to add something there soon. But we didn't learn it right away. So we what we did was we did the singing part as is. We took out the, the suggested words and then the um the music kate song comes with um there's a recording with the kid voices and a recording without so we took the recording without right and we added in our own words so the b section we just added silly words that were um uh lions tigers and bears oh my creatures from the ocean creatures from the sky gather up the family gramps and grandma too come and take a visit to our groovy zoovy zoo those are not the words for Music K8. So, <laughs> so don't be like, Music K8, why don't you have those words? We just, we just changed the words, made them our own. Lions and tigers and bears on oh my, we live in Kansas. We're like required to make a Wizard of Oz joke once a year. Or so, okay, so that was our, that was that. Um, and then it was just easy stuff that was sort of zoo related. 
So the A section is groovy, zooby, zoo, and the B section is lions, tigers, and bear, the spoken word. And then the C um, is, uh, it, it plays these animal sounds and it plays alarm sounds. <laughs> And so with every one, it's like the animals are escaping. Oh, no. Well, so what we did was we were on the risers and on the every, I told kids, okay, you can either point to an animal you see that's escaped. You can like be uh, surprised at an animal right in front of you. You can pretend you have a net like you're going to catch one. You can pretend like you have binoculars or looking for them. And the whole premise of the show was we're at the zoo, but only the animals have escaped. So we started out with this song, and um, it was hilarious. There were a lot of parents who were like, well, I'm taking a photo of this because, you know, all 100 kids on the rise was like, you know, doing their best, like, surprise. So it was pretty cute. It's a cute little song, and the form goes A, B, C, A, B, C, A. So sing, spoken word, alarms, sing, spoken word, alarms, sing, done super cute little song uh, it was fun to start with one that like had a backing track the kids liked it um, they had these like actions for the groovy zooby they were very happy about it it was it was a fun sort of anchor song to start us and to end us so groovy zooby zoo the second song um, is matilda the gorilla i had a pet gorilla her name it was a matilda Matilda liked to sing songs every day, and this is what Matilda the gorilla would say. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. So it's like uh, the story, there are four verses, and they're pretty easy for kids to learn. Um, it's pretty simple. The verse two is, we go walking through the park. People would point and the dogs would bark. They never understood a word Matilda would sing, but she was busy doing her gorilla thing. So it's sort of like, we have a pet gorilla. What? And then in the third verse, of the original words, the circus man came along and said, Matilda, I know where you belong. Join us in the circus. So I just changed those words to, one day the zookeeper came along, he said, Matilda. So we changed the words there. And then verse four is, um, Matilda was as happy as she could be eat her bananas and swing through the trees so it's uh it's just a really sort of super simple song but like parents loved it when the kids were singing and doing the ooh ah it was super cute um and they look like gorillas but it's just really easy i accompanied it on ukulele i had to fudge some of the chords so they worked right but um it worked just fine we did it in um f the key of f so um this song you can find in a lot of different places um, one of the books that I used as I was like planning this concert was this book by Lynn Kleiner called Jungle Beat. Um, so if you don't know Lynn Kleiner or her company, which is Music Rhapsody, you should check them out. Um, Lynn is not paying me to talk about this, but I just use her book all the time. So it's a great book. Um, her, uh, for my other concert, I'm using one of her other books as an, as, um, for content but Matilda the gorilla is in here if you have this book already or you're like I'm gonna get that book um, it's in here there's a version of it in here let me see if the lyrics are exactly the same I also learned it at camp a couple years ago yeah this one is because the whole point of her book is about the jungle it's like in the jungle I saw a gorilla her name was Matilda yeah so it's like a, a version of it you could absolutely adapt and change however you want it. Easy peasy. Okay, and I'm sure Matilda the Gorilla is out of line too. Um, the next song, Wake Up. Let me see if I got in the right key. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cows. Or go, I think the original is, wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cattle, because the cattle got out. And so this is like an old song. It's more of like a... Um, like a, a shepherd or like a cowboy song, like, oh, you the, the animals are loose, you need to go find them. And so what we did was in the fall, we learned this song as like a game um, and we did it just with cattle. And then as we were preparing for the concert, we brought this back and we're like, instead of cattle, what if it was a zookeeper who somehow had lost the porcupines or lost the flamingos or lost the whatever? So we just adapted the words. Then when we did it for our parents, um, for the concert, all the kids were spread out on the floor of the gym. So like for, you know, class here, class here, class here, class here. We sang the songs as if we were singing to that zookeeper who was doing a terrible job letting the animals fall asleep or letting the animals um, out while he was asleep. My 
people telling her to anyway so we sang as if we're singing to that um zookeeper who let them out wake up you sleepy heads and go and find the unicorns or whatever i know i said go and find the rhinos wake up you sleepy heads and go and find the rhinos and then the response is the rhinos are lost the sun is warm i think i'll wait till they come home now i'll go to sleep so we just adapted the original song and we changed it and then what i did after each verse was you know what now miss allison's class decided that they want to take a nap too they're very tired and been working very hard so those kids all laid down so then the other three classes instead of just singing to some random imaginary zookeeper they'd sang at the class that laid down after that verse another class lays down so two of the four classes are laying down so the other two sing at them and the two who are laying down sing the response because it's sort of a call and a response song there's the call verse there's the response chorus there's the call verse the response chorus so then you know after that that time through another class sits down after that another class sits down at the end all four classes are laying down pretending to be asleep so i turn around to the audience and say oh my gosh i'm gonna need your help to sing to these sleepy heads it goes wake up you sleepy heads and go and find the polar bears wake up so i ran through it and then i had the audience sing with me and the first graders all responded it was super cute but like each after each verse one homeroom would fall asleep and then by the time we we're done all the homerooms had fallen asleep so the parents had to help cute uh, the next part was another one that we adapted we learned little bo peep early early on in the school year and so we learned that this little bo peep has lost her sheep but then what we did for this concert was we changed it and said you know when little bo peep grew up she got hired at the zoo oh my gosh what a terrible idea and so the first day on the zoo we said um little bo peep we're so glad you're here or i think it said big bo peep big bo peep we're so glad you've come to work at the zoo we need you to watch the flamingos and the kids know once they hear the animal they go oh no and here's what happened little bo peep has lost the flamingos and doesn't know where to find them pause and something happens and then leave them alone and they'll come home so what happens in between doesn't know where to find them of my four homerooms that are out and spread out in a row in the in the gym one of them turns into flamingos so they like do their best job of trying to pretend to be flamingos and the other three are like looking around pretending like, i can't see where are the flamingos where would they be and they get to basically be bo peep so the way that verse would work is like little bo peep has lost the flamingos and doesn't know where to find them one class pretends to be flamingos the other ones look right through them past them can't find them um, and while they're doing that i'm just clicking And I hit the bell and then the flamingos turn back into kids and we finish the poem leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them okay and then the next one is the porcupines so then the next class in the lineup gets to pretend to be porcupines while the other three classes look in the middle of the the poem then the next class gets to be giraffes and the next class gets to be alligators which was hilarious to see these kids pretend to be alligators and like the other classes like where could they be um so it was just sort of cute but it was a, a version of again the game we already learned in our classroom just adapting it and changing it so like there wasn't a lot of teaching i had to do for that because they already knew little bo peep they knew the story of that it just was like well then she grew up and joined the zoo oh no and so then i just added in that little section in the middle where each each homeroom got to pretend to be another animal super cute and fun and easy after that came a song called animal action which is from an album called kids in motion by uh, greg and steve super 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 old it's been around for a long long time but um the album on the on the song um animal action there are two songs animal action on this album animal action one animal action two and the way that it works is like um the first part goes come on everybody come down to the zoo go and do a dance that the animals do animal action is so much fun and what i said to kids was on that part you need to dance the way a first grader would dance dance the way a kid would dance and then what says look like a you have to become that animal you have to move the way that animal would so say like move like an elephant so then all the kids turn into elephants and there's some sort of like elephanty music playing so what i said to parents was you're going to see our zookeepers have been observing the animals so closely and they do a really good impression of some of these animals so you're going to see them dancing like kids and then also moving the way animals would move just watch and then i i played it and it goes through like five or six different animals um 
again, just super fun, super cute, but I'm basically showing like we're, we're learning contrasting sections we're learning um, versus we're learning, you know, movement in different ways. So it's another chance for parents to like see what we sort of do in the classroom anyway, but see uh, a performance version of that. Then we do the song, Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear was sleeping. Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear was sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. Okay, so the way we did this was, there is a very famous circle game. If you don't know the circle game, you should go check it out. I'm sure I've shared about it before on one of these videos, but I'm sure it's online too. So um, the way we performed it was we all did it just standing, looking at our parents and they're like our standing spots, right? We sang it very nice, sweet, wonderful. And at the end, they get to go, he'll get very mad. And then they get to scream and they, get, they think that's hilarious. They all giggle. And then I started playing this. And that was our signal. Like once they heard that, that meant you're going to transition from your standing spots to making a big circle and we're going to show parents the game. They loved that. They loved the idea of being able to play this. Like It's a circle game. It's a chase game. They love the idea of being able to do the chase game for parents. Well, just to do the game at all. But then to do it for parents or do it for our school, they love that. So um, I pre-selected a grizzly bear and a zookeeper for, from each class. I think I actually had the homeroom teachers do that. But we made sure there was a pre-selected kid. So once we transitioned to the game, they could start right away. And, and one of the cool things about this was I said, for kids, you know, like in the classroom, at the end of a game, there's a little bit of lag time in between like ending the game, choosing the new kid, whatever, and starting over. And I said, you know what? In between, in between times, you know, usually it takes a while like, oh, you gotta choose a new grizzly, gotta choose a new zookeeper, what it takes a little while. We just don't have time. For our parents, we don't have time. We gotta get through as many as we can. So this is how long you're gonna have to choose a replacement. And then we're singing. That's as long as you have. So you gotta choose quick. And you know the rules about how to choose and who to choose and whatever, but you can't be like, huh, who should I choose? I think I'm gonna choose. Maybe, but now I don't know if someone to nod their hand. You can't do that. You can't, you just gotta choose and go because otherwise we're gonna start singing. The other three classes are gonna go and your class won't be ready. You won't know what to, you know, so like, I, I played up, made a big deal, but it was so cool the night of the performance because we stood out, you know, they did their thing where they stood and sang to the parents and then I started playing the bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. They quickly made a circle in like less than 15 seconds. Crazy, crazy for first graders. They knew who was gonna be in the inside. They knew who's gonna be in the outside chasing. We did the game like four or five times, super easy. They got to switch partners and it was fun from the audience perspective because you saw four circle games going at the same time and you could like choose who you wanted to watch it was it was like at a sports bar we have like eight tvs going it's so like when one game ends you can watch another one so much fun to watch um and it makes me think like i should include something like this in all of my concerts because it's just really entertaining but also fun to see how the game works that the kids are still singing and you know they find so much joy even if they're not playing and but anyway that wouldn't have worked if we hadn't played the game already in class and set up expectations like if you don't get chosen for the zookeeper you know i learned from my friend natasha thurman like uh I i've made it a mantra in my classroom if you don't get chosen today oh well maybe next time i say that so much now that kids are like oh well maybe next time but i learned that from natasha oh my gosh thank you natasha for teaching me to teach kids that anyway so they, it wouldn't have worked if we hadn't set up the expectations for you can't take too long to choose a new partner. You gotta make circles quick. Uh, if you don't get chosen, that's okay. We're just doing this to show parents. Uh, maybe you'll get chosen for the afternoon, not the evening, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, but, but anyway, it was a, a quick, easy way. We played the game four or five times and was super fun to watch. Then, at the, so that was what, let's see. Wake Up You Sleepyheads, Little Bo Peep, Going to the Jungle, Animal Action, Grizzly Bear. Five little songs, not all that long. We just did a little bit of an extension in each one. That was all spread out on the gym floor. So like, and, and ahead of time, I even, in the, in the day before uh, the concert, when I sent out a, 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 the program to parents, I also put a little map of the gym. And I said, for the most part, Miss Mendez's class is gonna stand here. So if you want to get good pictures, sit on the left side of the gym. Or in Miss Allison's class, going to stand here. I put a map of like where the where the classes would most of the time 
B. So for those five songs, where they would be. So you knew if you wanted to take a picture, don't sit way on the back on the right because your kid is going to be up on the front left, as far left as you can go. You know, so I sort of sent that out the night before so parents had at least a little bit of an idea like, here's where I should go if I want to see my kid do their thing. So anyway, when they were down on the floor, I didn't have anybody say like, oh, I couldn't see anybody. For the most part, they could. Uh, and also they knew, they knew going into it like where their kid was going to be. So for the last two songs, we went back up onto the riser, so more of a typical up on the stage. So if they want to get that riser shot, they could. What I did this time that I don't know if I would do last time, so I had four homerooms, Allison, Goodman, Mendez, and Moyer. And so the way I did it last, the first time was like Allison and Goodman's class were on the top on the risers, and Mendez and Moyer were on the bottom, sort of more on the stage floor and the gym floor. So the second time we did riser stuff, I flipped it. So Miss Mendez and Miss whoever I said were, just so the kids who were down below last time were up high this time and who kids were up high were down low. Just so like you could you could get a picture of your kid up on the risers at some point. And just so kids could try it. So like at some point they were standing on the riser steps. Like maybe for one song they were down on the floor, but then they were also on the riser steps. So I flip-flopped it. It was a little bit of a hassle to teach these first graders to do that. We call it riser spot one and riser spot two. So they knew that they were either you know down or up or whatever. It, it took a little bit, but they did get it and it did work. So I have faith that if I were to do this again, I would probably develop a better trick of like how to teach kids where to go. Um, but I also feel like it got parents a chance to see their kid on the riser. So maybe it was worth it. I don't know. But anyway, for the last two songs, we switched to riser spot two and we flip flopped and they were up in those spots. And the last two songs we did were uh, Five little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bug. Blah, blah. And so that we're like, we're in the rainforest, or we're in the, you know, like whatever, in the rainforest exhibit, and sang about the speckled frogs. And then we ended with Groovy Zooby Zoo. And we'd done Groovy Zooby Zoo before to start, but it was like a fun capstone for the concert. And I said, you parents, you know that we did this one at the beginning, but this time I have a job for you. So on this time, when we do the or we're looking at the escaped animals or trying to find them, um, your kid knows they're supposed to look out at you. So two things you should do. Um, one, if you want to take a picture of them going, <gasps> now you know they're going to do that. Uh, so now's your, now's your warning. Okay, also, um, if you want the very best picture, whoever's not taking the picture, make them do an animal face. If they could do an animal face at the kid, then you're going to get a great smiling kid going, <gasps> pointing out, you know, right? It's so like to really maximize our photo time. You know, on that part of the song, make an animal face back at your kid and then take some pictures or whatever. So, but it was like, it was just so parents weren't like, oh, they're doing the song again. Well, yeah, we're doing the song again because it's a good capstone to the concert. But also, um, now you know it's like your photo opportunity. Um, and then anyway, uh, so it worked out. That's all the songs are one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, seven, eight, nine, six, nine songs. But they're all super short. So I didn't feel bad about that. But again, I probably would have cut, if I were to do this again, I'd probably cut out either Little Bo Peep or Animal Action. Oh, and I forgot I even to talk about one of the songs, but I cut out one of those two um, just because it would, it would shorten the song a little bit. The one song I forgot to talk about that I zoomed over was called Going to the Jungle Today. It's a direct song from Jungle Beat. This is a Lynn Kleiner original, I think. Um, oh, we're going to the jungle today. Oh yeah, oh we're going to the jungle today. And th there is a recording of it in here that I could have used, but I decided instead to play on the ukulele and play on a tubano. So in that song, there's like a sung part where the kids like moved and sort of moved around the room. And there's a, um, the, it's a cute little song. Keep the beat in your feet. We're in for a treat in the jungle today. Oh yeah, here we go in the jungle today. Oh yeah, here we go in the jungle today. Yeah, and at the end they did like a pose and so again it was a nice one for parents because they got a good photo out of it but also the kids were moving around and through and then they had to come back to their spots so it was like a fun chance for movement and then to get them back um, so it broke up the concert a little bit so there's more moving but also like um, this was a song where like at the beginning of the year it was like keeping the beat and the song even says keep the beat in your feet so you saw kids actually walking to the beat as they were doing it. So like, hey, our curriculum, but also it's a part of the concert. So I would definitely keep that one in the show. Um, but on either side of that song, or Little Bo Peep or Animal Action, I maybe would cut one of those if I were to do this this exact concert again. And, and actually speaking of that, doing this exact concert again, um, when I'm done with the concert, I always take a big manila folder, I put the name of the concert on it, I put when I did it and where I did it. So at PRE 422, 
um, first grade. So then I know if I want to reuse this or reuse material, I know when I did it, I put in a copy of the program. I put in a copy of all the songs I used and recordings on a CD in case, because I'm going to lose them. I put in anything else I put in like pictures of, um, like the backdroppy stuff I used. I put in actual photos of the gym if I think that's important. I put in all of like my materials of like prep and leading up to, so like I know the couple days leading up to the concert. I leave myself little notes or whatever about what I did, what I added, how I changed. So the next time I do this concert, I'm not reinventing the wheel because why? But um, the cool thing about this specific concert, the zoo concert is in first grade in the kindergarten, there are so many songs about animals um, that you can easily craft your own version of this concert and bring in a ton of songs that you're already doing in the classroom. So then you're not like just teaching a song for the concert. You're basically taking material they already know and you're just adapting it, which, which feels good because then you're staying on your curriculum and also you're not wasting time and also you're doing what you would normally do anyway. You're just adapting it to be in a concert. So, and you're showing parents what we do in the classroom. That's so valuable. I didn't have students say lines, so I was sort of like head zookeeper, and I would like, before each song, I'd be like, oh my, now we hired a brand new hire. We're very excited about her. her name is Bo Peep, and here's what, ha you know, so like I would just give a little narrative like that in between each one. Ooh, we're headed to the jungle exhibit today because we're going to see all the animals that live in the jungle exhibit, you know, whatever, in the jungle dome or the rainforest or whatever, you know, whatever the song was. Um, I just gave a little on the mic introduction and but the cool thing is with an open-ended thing like this animals you can pull in whatever you want okay if you have questions about this concert if you have thoughts about this concert if you have ideas that you're like i would add this please put that in the comments um, or send me an email my emails make moments matter at gmail.com um, i would love to get more ideas so i can add for next time or change or think about or um, share with other folks um, so yeah, send in those ideas if you have ideas, or I hope this gave you some ideas for maybe next year's concert if you're planning ahead for next year. Um, this is week 14 of Musical Mondays. So next week is the last one of the season, last one of the school year. Um, if you have questions or comments or ideas, I'm gonna put a post on Facebook in the next couple days trying to get some of those questions. So please start thinking about them now and shoot me an email with your questions or anything general, classroom, drums, orf instruments, concert prep, anything, anything you're thinking about or like, hey, could we talk about blah, blah, blah. Throw that out there. I'd love to answer some of those questions next week since it's our last one. Anyway, I hope you're having a great school year, a great week. I'll see you again for one more time next Monday for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks so much for coming along today and spending your evening with me. Good night, everyone.